Okay, we have uh, practice uh, monohybrid question number one, page seven, uh, is the first one we're going to take a look at here. So let's go right to the question. It's, and we're going to try to utilize the steps when they go through this. Uh, my advice is practice these steps, even though these monohybrids are probably one of the most simplistic uh, genetic type of questions you're going to encounter. Practice the steps because this is all foundational learning. If you practice the steps, once you start getting to the more complex dihybrids and polygenic questions, um, if you utilize the steps, you're going to be a lot more just going to be a lot simpler to navigate through those type of questions. So practice them now, and uh, let's go through the question. It says uh, in pea plants, round seeds are dominant to wrinkle. Now my advice to you, as soon as you get to something that enables you to do a legend, start that right away. Don't read the entire question, it's wasting time. If you have information right there, let's start breaking that down. So we know step one in our list of steps is a legend, okay? So we can do a legend right now. It's saying round seeds are dominant to wrinkle. So we have to give some uh, notation to these alleles. So we know capital R, is the round dominant characteristic. So it gets the capital R. So you use the capital letter of the dominant trait. So that would be round. Now, I always put a line and I suggest you guys do the same thing. A lot of people use legends where they're only uh, put in no, uh, notation for the actual allele, but put the whole genotype in there. So what that line signifies to us is that no matter what that other allele, we know genes are always in pairs. We know one of them is a capital R. I don't care what that other allele is. It can be a big R, it can be a small R. Uh, it's still going to give us the phenotype round. Okay, so you know phenotypes are the actual expression, the actual trait based on the genotype. Okay, uh, and wrinkled is obviously, uh, by deduction, is recessive. So how that works is you don't give it a capital W, you use the small case of the dominant trait, so that would be little r. So this is normally how notation is assigned, uh, unless they give you something different in the question, because sometimes questions give the notation in there, uh, but if you're not, this is generally how you work it. So two little r's, and we are going to put two little r's, because we know that the only way that you can have a recessive trait expressed is if you have both alleles being recessive, in this case, recessive wrinkled alleles. So this will be wrinkled. Okay, and that's your legend. Very important to do this. And in some cases, uh, the most complex step in all of them. If you get the legend right, take your time with it, the rest of the question is gonna make sense. It's just gonna be a lot easier. So now we have to go through the question. So there's our legend. Step one now or is the legend. Step two is underline the parents and tell us the genotype, their genotype based on the information, if you can. Some questions won't allow you to do that. So let's try this one. A heterozygous round plant is crossed with another heterozygous round plant. So those are our two parents. Let's underline them and let's just on the side or above, wherever, Let's put the genotypes. If it's hedro, that means both those alleles are different. Hedro is the prefix for different. So we know one of them has to be an R and there are only two alleles for this particular trait. So the other one would have to be a little R. That's hedro, two alleles being different. Uh, the other one is also the same. So we can put that one down here. And that is step two. Underline the parents, tell me their genotypes. Step three. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to make a Punnett square. So for monohybrid, this is a monohybrid because there's only one trait involved. This would be seed shape. Okay, so that's just one trait. That's what makes it monohybrid, mono prefix for one. There's two ways that we can express seed shape, and that would be either round or wrinkled, but that still is just one gene here. That's just one trait. Okay, later on we're going to get into some more complex ones called dihybrids. So, uh, step three, Punnett square. Just like a game of X's and O's. Okay, uh, we can shade this part out. And what we're going to do now is we're going to isolate the genotypes of each parent into gametes. That's what we're doing here with a Punnett square. We're putting the gametes down the top 
and then down the side. Now, generally, females go on top, male goes down on the side. But if you don't know who the male and female here, it's just arbitrary. Here, it doesn't matter because both of them have the same genotype. So let's just take this one for convenience. We're going to take that allele and we're going to separate that and that's going to isolate into one let's just say for intensive purposes into one of the female's eggs here so this simulates an egg take the other allele and we're going to put that into her other egg so what this says is that now you know she's going to make a lot more than just two eggs but 50 percent half of all her eggs is going to have the dominant r allele for round and half of the gametes or half of her eggs are going to have the recessive wrinkled little r allele. That's what that means. We're going to do the same thing for the other parent. So the other parent, we're going to isolate that allele into, in this case, let's just pretend we knew that this was the male. This would be his sperm. Okay. And the other half of his sperm is going to contain the recessive allele for wrinkled. Now you don't have to draw all that stuff. We're just trying to show you what we're doing with the actual genotypes and a Punnett square. So a Punnett square is going to isolate the genotypes into gametes and put those across the top for the female if we know and down the side uh, as the sperm for the male. Okay. So that's step three. Step four is just filling in the Punnett square to simulate fertilization. That's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to say that if this particular egg got fertilized by this particular sperm, then, and that's fertilization, then the genotype of that offspring is going to be capital R, capital R. That's the offspring's genotype. So what they're asking you to do, is, uh, and now this is a probability question, but to do probability question, we have to fill, into the, fill in this Punnett square. Now, what I suggest, and again, we're trying to build foundationally to more complex questions coming up. So what I'd like you to do in your box is tell me what the phenotype is based on this offspring's genotype and put that right into the box. So this is why we have a legend, so we can interpret this after. So we know that as long as there's a capital R, go to my legend, and it says if I have a capital R, I really don't care what the other allele is, this is going to be a round phenotype. So again, phenotype is the actual expression, the actual trait based on that offspring's genotype. And then we keep filling it in. So we know that if this egg gets fertilized by that sperm, we're going to get a capital R, little r. Capital R, little r, heterozygous. But again, go back to our legend. As long as they're a capital R, we really don't care what the other allele is. That's still going to be round. Okay, and the first one, of course, both the alleles were the same. When they're the same, homozygous. Homo is the prefix for same. Okay, keep filling this in, capital R. And when you're filling in the genotypes of the offspring, the dominant allele must always be first. Okay, so you got to put the dominant R first, followed by the recessive wrinkled little r. And same thing, heterozygous, but we know it's heterozygous for round. Because again, looking at the legend, as long as there's a capital R, it's going to be round. Uh, and here's our only wrinkle. So we bring these guys together, little r, little r. It's the only way that I can get a recessive trait expressed is if both my alleles are recessive. Go back to my legend, little r, little r. That's why we do it. It is wrinkled. Okay, so that's step four, filling in the Punnett square. Now let's see what the question was actually asking. It says, what is the probability Four, wrinkled seeds. They're asking out how many of these offspring are going to be wrinkled uh, from the F1 generation. And again, F1 generation just means the first generation of that cross with those two parents. Sometimes you'll see P1. Those are the first parents. When you cross P1 parents, you get an F1 offspring. F1 offspring. Okay, and this one, very important to do this. It says express your answers in two decimal places. So that means you have to show the zero. And again, we've given you the answer here. Decimal, uh, and then we'd have two of these. Now, what you would do often, if you there is another number there, you may round up, right? If it's five or higher, you'd round up. But let's just work this out. 
So how you do a probability in a decimal place is count the number of total boxes. We have four total boxes. How many out of those four boxes do we have wrinkled? One out of four. So that's the fraction. If we wanna do a decimal, that fraction, this sign right here is just like divide. One divided by four, 0 0.25. Now, if the question requested percentage, that's why I always say circle what the question is asking for. It'd be a drag to do all this work and then put in, uh, fill in the wrong information because you didn't read how they wanted their answer expressed. So if they wanted a percentage, you just move it over a couple of times or multiply by 100, it would have been 25%. And that means they can have a million babies, 25% of them are going to be wrinkled. 75% are gonna be round, okay? And that is our answer, okay? Okay, any questions, just uh, give me an email and we can go over some of these. Uh, all these videos aren't going to be as, as long. I just wanted to kind of give you for the first video on these crosses just uh, some extra information just to be able to understand why you're doing Punnett squares and the rest of it and a couple other strategies. We'll make them a lot faster after that. Okay, thanks guys, bye.